What's up, guys? Thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me. The Switch edition of this weekend homebrew consists of new exploits, updates on the Team Executor mod chip, homebrew basically confirmed on 4.0 firmware, and an epic achievement by Fail Overflow. Interested? We'll keep watching. First up for the Switch news, we're over on Sires M's GitHub page, and this is a HackTool 1.0.1 release. Now, just a little while ago, HackTool 1.0.0 was released, but there needed to be a few bug fixes implemented, so here it is. In case you didn't know, HackTool is a tool to view information about, decrypt, and extract common file formats for the Nintendo Switch, especially Nintendo content archives. It is heavily inspired by CTR Tool. Up next, we're over here on Kate Temkin's Twitter page, and she is a member of the ReSwitch team. If you've watched Hedgeburg stream lately, then you've probably heard Kate talking in the background. I do believe that is the same person. A quick note on that, they are trying to get Linux running on the Switch, basically make it a little tablet. We'll have more on that in a second. So with this tease, this cold boot execution hack might be the fourth or maybe even the fifth one on the Switch. I don't know if that's true or not. Are these all different boot ROM bugs that people are finding and exploiting? It's very interesting. If you guys have more information, let me know down in the comments. Now we're over here on Kate's YouTube page. Go ahead, give her a subscription, give her a thumbs up, and you can see this quick three second video of their cold boot proof of concept. So they're gonna turn on the Nintendo Switch, it's going to boot, and there we go. Hopefully, we'll have some more information on that soon. Over here on TeamExecutor.com, and they have a quick update on their Switch mod chip. Basically, they experienced a few days delay due to Chinese New Year, but they finally received their prototype boards. The only thing is they're experiencing a few issues with reliability of their entry point. They're going to work on refining it and hopefully getting it out to us soon. They say they're sorry for the delay, but they're sure that all Switch owners will be delighted by their product and that it is worth the wait. Now I know this seems like a godsend to anyone that updated their Switch past 3.0.0, but I have some absolutely fantastic news from Michael Sires over on Twitter. Let's check it out. So this is a quick post over on his Twitter page with a link to a video. Basically it says, anyway, I would strongly recommend not updating when a new firmware releases. So if you're currently on firmware 4.0 or 4.1, do not update your Switches any further. And I'm gonna show you why. Now over here on Michael Sire's YouTube page, if I go ahead and play the video, you can see he enters the Nintendo eShop, signs in and links his account, and then it's going to take him to this page where it's going to say reconnect on the top and the bottom, or reconnect and refresh. Now if we pause this here and skip ahead a little bit, you can see he presses a button, possibly the on button on the switch, and the next thing you know, there is a green screen that resembles homebrew on the 3DS. Now apparently what we just saw happen was deja vu. So if you guys recall, Michael Sires has an exploit that works on 1.0.0 as well as 3.0.0, which we talked about last week on This Week in Homebrew. Now in that episode, we also mentioned the 4.0.0 exploit known as deja vu, which he hadn't gone around to implementing. You can see here, he's now fully implemented it and Trust Zone on 4.x devices is basically pwned. So if you guys aren't interested in getting a mod chip in the future, there seems to be a ton of cold boot exploits coming around and we've now pwned the Trust Zone on all the firmwares. So do not update your Switch any further if you want to use Homebrew in the future. The absolutely epic thing about this is now anyone can probably go and buy a Switch. And while we're on the topic of that, I have a link down in the description if you guys want to help us donate to get a Switch. I currently have almost $150 going towards the Switch. You guys are epic. If you guys want to see everybody that donates, come check out the live streams. I always have them flashing across the top of the screen. That being said, if you want to be one of those names that flashes across the top of the screen, please go and donate and help us get a Switch. It would be awesome if I could make some videos about this stuff soon. So after all these new exploits, we're pretty sure the Switch is going to be hacked in the future, basically no matter what firmware you're on. But Fail Overflow is so far ahead of the game that it is ridiculous. If you go ahead and watch this video here, they are showing off a full Linux GUI running on this Switch with full touchscreen support. You can see he's on his own Twitter page here, uses his fingers to expand the page and scroll down. This is absolutely freaking amazing. 
I'll put a link down to the full video in the description, but as you can see here, Linux is now running on the Switch perfectly fine. Fail Overflow has gotten the touchscreen to work, the magnification, how does that even happen? This is so cool. Now, if that wasn't ridiculous enough, check out this picture over on Imgur. Now, apparently this is from Discord, and this shows that Fail Overflow Switch running Yuzu, the Switch emulator, playing space game. So this is a Switch running a Switch emulator. Are you kidding me right now? The Switch has barely even been out for a year, if it's even been out for a year yet, and we are this far into the hacking game. Now if you think this is godly, I want you to scroll down, slam that thumbs up button, it's really going to help out the channel, it's going to get this information out there so that people do not update their Switches any further. I do not want to see another fiasco, like a 3DS update where everyone is posting on Reddit and GBA temp asking how to downgrade because they updated. Also, while you're down there, you could hit that red subscribe button and you could learn more about homebrew every week. If you guys haven't followed me on Twitter, go check me out at Game in Canada. Also, I've just opened up a Discord. I'm going to put a link down in the description. If you're a supporter of the channel or you've been subscribed for a really long time, you guys are going to get an instant mod. If you have supported the channel by donating, you will get a supporter mod, and that is going to show that you support the channel. And I really appreciate you guys, so I'm going to make this community. Please, please, please don't come in and spam. If you do, I'm going to ban you. And I'm going to find you, and I'm going to hack your 3DS. I'm just kidding. All right, I'll catch you guys soon. Much love. Peace. Holy crap, guys. Right when I'm editing this video, Pluto goes ahead and drops the Switch Homebrew Launcher. If you guys are interested in getting the Switch Homebrew Launcher going, you're going to want to probably check out this GitHub link. I'll put a link down in the description. Absolutely epic. The Switch is just moving along way too fast. Way too fast.